Usually I do really loud claps to sync the audio. We've got to be quiet. Maybe we do a shush alignment. A lullaby. <laughs> we need to sing a lullaby. Welcome to today's edition of Llama Drives. It's been a while. Uh, first of all, Vaughn, how are you? I'm good. We haven't driven for a while. That's We've been at home because today's edition is brought to you by Shane, GP Llama, Vaughn, aka Mrs. Llama, and Baby Max, who's now in the back. So there's three of us that you'll get for the Llama Drives. Llama Drives are our semi-regular semi sit-down chat. Well, sit-down because we're obviously in the car, covering all things bike, tech, and some details from behind the scenes of the regular videos that I upload. This would be a really good podcast format, but here we are on YouTube. Feel free to alt-tab away and just listen in the background if you want to come along for the drive. Vaughn, how have you been? Yeah, pretty good. Now um, back of the bike. Still uh, not loving winter, but we had some glimmer of hope. Oh, yesterday was a beautiful day, yeah. 22, 23 degrees for the first time in many, many months here in Ballarat. Oh, I was indoors, I kind of missed it all. Oh, I, was... I went out. So we've got this awesome pram um, from Tula. Hang on, hang on. Are we going to be baby talk? To get out for the walks. So we're strivering them. We're not a baby I talk am. channel, we're not. <laughs> I'll keep us on track, don't worry. We're coming back to bikes. So yes, you're out with the Tula pram. Yeah, and um, strivering the walks. So Okay, there we go. Bike tech or yeah, sports. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. right. Because I, I, on on I have to build up my walks over time. I can't yes. just get straight back into it. So. Yeah, it's been a, um, an energy... It's true, you're back in the train, you're back yeah. in the train. <laughs> incremental, being walking. It's very difficult from having been, you know, a trained athlete yep. person yep. in the past. Yep. And, you know, doing laps of like right up until, uh, and going to Pilates right before. You did a, a yeah. swift race about three or four days before Max was born, I think. You were like ballooned out here and then... Yeah, you've done well. And Vaughn's back into doing the Zwift Academy races at the moment, or the rides. Yeah. So, all good. Uh, yep, yeah, awesome stuff. But at, at, a, at a new pace, not yes. at the same FTP now. <laughs> but hey, your weight is greatly reduced, so your watts per <laughs> kilo should be good. The weight is greatly Look, reduced. Within about 45 minutes after a C-section, you lost 3.386 kilos. Plus, plus, yeah. And the rest, yes. Yeah. Anyway, young Max is nice and healthy. 3.386 kilos on birth weight. He is way, way, way over that now. Last weigh was four and a half kilos. The kid is doing max gains. max gains, max watts, and his legs do not stop moving like this. We have a cyclist or a runner in the back. Um, he can't talk yet, so we don't know which one. Um, either way, we'll be happy with. He's very active, so it's all good. So, Vaughn, you're back on the bike. Uh, the kicker bike or the neo bike? Well, it depends which one comes to the house first. And if you're following my Instagram, then it's the kicker bike. <laughs> but I haven't actually been on it yet. In you, all you put out more teasers than I did. I was I, pretty excited. <laughs> so, the day, so the kicker bike has finally arrived in the Llama Lab. The neo bike, yeah. for anybody playing the long game at home, the neo bike, I got shipping details yesterday. Yeah. I think Tax saw my video about the kicker bike. I went, oh, that's, Look, so we can I, do some head-to-heads and side-by-sides. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cute. The um, team over at Wahoo are obviously, you know, following along our journey as well, and they send over a gift to whoever the, um, wow, little, little um, <laughs> j baby jumpsuit arrived oh as well God. for little Max, so it he's a little wah hooligan. Me up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for that, and I'll share, you can share a photo of that as well. It's very, very cool. So yeah, the reason why the kicker bike arrived and I was doing other things is because I was playing around with the radar icons. Yes. I did the magpie swooping video the other week, which is a teaser, obviously, about changing the icon. And I knew that was coming. I had the earlier, or the earlier, the later firmware, which allowed us to do that. And as soon as that dropped public, I wanted to put it out there. That also dropped with it the same functionality as they did the Garmin head unit sync with Trainer Road. Yes, it now syncs with um, Wahoo head units in the same bundle. Okay, so before you could do it with train, um, training peaks workouts. And training now peaks, you can do training, uh, training Yeah, anyway, that aside, okay. there was more functionality in this firmware, which was the bigger news about this, and the PR release was about that. Ray had an article about the trainer road uh, functionality and the sync functionality with Wahoo head units, but it was about that icon and about changing it into chickens. I think Ray had, um, I had kangaroos and Pac-Mans and things like that. Um, super cool stuff. 
I had to get that video out because Ray was sitting on his post about the train and road stuff and we wanted to do the post at the same time. So people could read one, go straight to the other or embed. And I think we did an interlink. Ray linked to my video in his post and my post linked to Ray's article. It was a bit meta, it was good. Anyway, we, okay. have, we have heaps of fun doing that. But my, that was where my attention was rather than the kick a bike. I think it's getting to the point now where new technology is great. We know all about it. We know, we expect it. Hey, three years ago, if you had said a new smart trainer was arriving or a smart bike, I would have lost my shit. I would have like, dropped everything. Let's look at that. Now it's like, all right, another box. Let's have a look at it. So I'm getting... You're sounding jaded. I'm, I'm getting worn off. I'm getting worn off. <laughs> worn out? Well, no, just worn off. Dentistry speak. Oh. <laughs> I've been to the dentist this week. And I'm going back next to it. Anyway, so look, uh, the unboxing video was out yesterday. It's doing really well. I needed to segment those up because I could create a 40 minute monster video on the kicker bike. Okay, yeah. People downvote that just because it's a 40 minute video. Or it's not applicable. You unbox it once. Who cares? Like sometimes, well, yeah, skip it, to I, the, I think it's interesting. Skip to the interesting bit. People yeah. want to skip to the interesting. So I'm allowing people, as I my journey goes through unboxing, fitting myself to the bike, which is a whole topic in itself. The, the three different fits, or the four fits if you just want to hail Mary and you know, try and measure it yourself. Um, so that, that's done quite well, but it did mean it did take time away from me riding the bike. So I haven't actually thrown a leg over that bike in anger just yet. Um, I'm getting a lot of questions coming in, which are fantastic. People want to know things like uh, Q factor, 150 mil, um, which is about three mil off normal road bike Q factor. The Atom is 160 mil. Mountain bikes about 170 mil. So this bike is within proper Q factor spec. Okay. Um, people are asking the, the slowest or the slowest. Smallest seat height, largest seat height, biggest reach, all those questions that are, they're in the manual, but until you give them context about, here's what it looks like in the smallest setting, and I jump yeah. on and look really small, so we, someone's peeping in the back there. So I'm gonna go through all of those and hopefully cover enough information that answers most questions that people yeah. will have about that in segments. So if you wanna know about the fit, watch the fit video. If you wanna know about the ride experience and the power accuracy, etc., watch that. I think I might even be able to do multiple videos on how the bike interacts with multiple software platforms. I know already that Fullgaz and Sufferfest use those extra buttons. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, what that, that's like, oh really, how does that work? I'm interested, I don't know, we'll be looking into that. Zwift is still pending on that. I'm thinking the steering that's coming out on Zwift could use those inner buttons really easily, just to sort of veer or steer. Brakes are there as well. This is a, a, a what would you call it, an unchiseled piece of granite at the moment. What they're going to well, be able to do with the future. It's emerging technology, so Correct, that's yeah. really exciting. So anyway, super cool stuff. So the Neo bike will sit next to that next week, fingers crossed. Um, and people are asking, uh, you know, which one's best, Kicker or Neo? That battle never ever. I think I'm going to make T-shirts with Kicker or Neo. Oh, we're going to do like Ninja or um, what's that arcade game with the ninjas? Where you Street Fighter? Street Fighter. Is it Street Kicker Fighter versus Mortal Kombat? Is that, that's, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. So Kicker versus Pothole. Ooh, Kicker yeah. versus Neo. <laughs> There's got to be a way to jump on that bandwagon, and I think they, the company still have it. It's, it's a nice, friendly rivalry. People, it's a bit of a religion. People go one way or the other. It's well, about riding bikes. Till I ride them both, I cannot give you an answer. Neither can I. And that's what a lot of people are looking for. We have one review at the moment out about the Kia, the Neo bike, which is race. Dive into the details there. Dive into the details. It's very similar to that of the Neo 2T, which only just yesterday got FCC certification. So they, they were announcing it. Um, without FCC, FCC certification in the States, you can't sell something. It's gotta be verified that it doesn't uh, hurt your brain waves or- Oh, it, it's an electricity or bandwidth thing? Yes, okay. they do all these testing of, um, okay. it does what it says it does and doesn't go outside those ranges within normal use, etc. So they've only just got FCC cert yesterday on the okay. Neo 2T, so they can now sell them. So which brings me to Eurobike. Um, Overall summary of Eurobike, nothing really changes, nothing's really ready. Um, standouts from Eurobike, Vaughn, did you notice anything? Like if I was to say to you, Eurobike, you saw all the coverage that I did, um, which Ray did, people on the ground there did. No real the, standouts? The two things that I thought sounded cool mm -hmm. was the massive screen at the Zwift stand and the kicker bike. <laughs> okay, they're your two things. Yeah. I wish I had seen the big screen. That Maybe it, next year. Now on the Zwift cast, <laughs> Simon Schofield had Jacob on there from Zwift talking about the screen. It looked amazing in the shots. Jacob's, the way he presents himself and speaks, he sold that screen better than almost anybody else Simon spoke to 
who was a product manager there at the show who was selling their products and their brands and things. Jacob just... Well, the na- bike products. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Jacob just, like, spoke about this screen and we all now want one. Yeah. So, listen to the Zwiftcast. I think it was two episodes ago or one of Simon's... Uh, I'll put links below to the Zwiftcast, which I'm a panellist on. That was good stuff. But, yeah, Eurobike. I think we saw this coming. Refinements. I think it was a quieter Eurobike. More accurate and... Um, more features, that's about it for the Eurobike. But look, outside of the smart bikes, uh, there wasn't any really head unit um, announcements. Obviously, Sages were there with their dash. Um, what else do we have? I think Lazine had a couple of little units. That, there was, the Rome had already been announced. It didn't hit the 830, the 530, the, uh, the upgrades came along um, to the 1030 Invader before that. I think Eurobike is becoming more and more irrelevant each year. Tough. That's a tough Truth. statement. True. I think companies are now doing their own launches. Right. Companies now have their own PR and they don't want to be lost in the noise of Eurobike. Noise being that if there's 50 trainers released or 50 head units or this or that in Eurobike, no one hears about it. It's so just... your focus is mainly around the new tech and bits mm-hmm. and pieces. Yep. What about the bike component of Eurobike? You're saying that the big manufacturers like Giant and Specialized, etc., they don't have stands there, nope. so therefore, that, that hence that relevance of Specialized do their own thing, Giant do their own thing. I think Canyon. I'm not sure if Canyon were there or not, but we didn't see any new bikes or new tech. From what about Canyon an, a Euro brand like Bianchi? Uh, I believe Bianchi are there. We have seen okay. them. So they're more traditional, I think, that they will go to the trade shows. Um, now this is B two B. It's about business to business, not business to consumer. But still, these days it's a it's a very big blurred line there because mm-hmm. of how much they share on social and how much they promote stuff. And at the end of the day, businesses are also consumers. If that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, we saw Ceramic Speed again roll out their um, driving driven chain set thing last year. But for me once which was last year because you couldn't ride the thing. Fool me twice because this year they rolled it out again saying it now shifts, but we still haven't seen anyone ride the thing. Fool us three times at Ceramics, but you can't pull that out next year. We are done. Everyone, My video from that made a significant amount of money on YouTube because it went viral. Initially. Initially, yeah, yeah. initially. It's sort of still ticking away. 5.2 million views of that video. It went crazy. It was interesting tech at the time. Um, it, it just went viral everywhere. Everyone has obviously seen that video. Uh, this year they rolled it out again and every other media company tried to do the same thing. There are about 30 or 40 videos on YouTube using the same thumbnail, the same thing as last year. Um, again, it was interesting. Nothing new though. Nothing new. And that was analogous of Eurobike as a whole. Let's roll out the same shit from last year. Just tweaked a little. Is it ready? Nah. Next. Yeah. <laughs> That's So... I think, and Ray and I have spoken about this, and I think I've spoken about this on here or any other podcast that I do. Zero day. IQ squared when they announced that they were going from the pedal plug into the pedal itself. I caught wind of that, emailed IQ squared, got the inside scoop and had a video out as soon as they announced it. Bang. They got, those guys weren't even at Eurobike. But IQ squared is a very interesting topic. I won't say product because we haven't seen the product yet. but. The internet's doing it, not not us. I, I won't accept responsibility as a whole, but the internet is doing that. Anyhow, that's my wrap from Eurobike. It needs to exist. I'll continue going back to Eurobike for the people, for the people. But the, okay. if, if the technology doesn't keep stepping up and keep um, incentivizing people to spend money in the industry, which is what it's all about, um, it's going to die off very soon. We were, well, um, Interbike's gone from the US. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I'd love to see that replaced. Sea Otter's kind of cool, but Sea Otter's definitely more of an outdoor event as a whole. It's more of an event. You go there to race, but logistics of getting there to race is also difficult. But anyhow, that's where we're at for Eurobike. Um, Up this week as well on my list, I've got my list of just randomness here. The Giant Power Pro 2019 power meter has a battery life of, or listed battery life, 150 hours. I wasn't getting anywhere near 150 hours. I thought I was charging that thing every week or two. Turns out, it lasts 118 hours of continual use. Right. Which isn't bad. 118 hours of continual use. The specification was 150 hours. Continual use? 150 hours, I'm guessing that's what they meant. Right. The, it's a bit vague in the, in the manual. Um, it got a low battery warning after 63 hours, though. 
kind of weird. Anyway, I'll raise that with Giant Australia. If they think that's okay, okay. If they don't, they can replace that and away we go. But another interesting experiment. Now, how I did that experiment this week was, how do you keep something moving with the accelerometers to keep it awake? How do you keep something moving non-stop for 115 hours, up to 150 hours? I'm thinking, do I get a fan, a drill, a yeah, motor, drill. Yeah. something or other? Thinking outside the square because Vaughn was riding the Neo 2 indoors. And I think you stepped off it when it had the direct drive on the downhill. Yeah, and it had the yeah. negative gradient. <clears throat> Neo yeah. 1, 2, 2T and the bike will tick the flywheel over for you and move the flywheel if you're going on a, a downhill gradient, a simulated descent. So it's a downhill drive. It doesn't do much in game. It doesn't propel you forward at all. It just turns the flywheel over. It sounds like and feels like you're riding a bike down a hill, kind of. What you can do though, is lock out the rear hub so it doesn't freewheel. And I did that by removing a bolt from the, fly, um, from the flywheel, wiring that up with some picture frame wire around the cassette, bolting it back on and it locks it. It's not gonna be very strong, but it's gonna keep the chain ticking over, not uh, freewheeling. Yeah, and and considering I, you're not pedaling that. Yes. Yeah. just. Locking. Then I opened up the, the tax utility app, set a negative gradient of about negative 2%, put everything on the charge, hit go on one of the Garmin's and just left it for days. And it just ticked over and ticked over and ticked over. And it, can, and it just kept spinning the power meter. So no power going through the power meter. However, it was still obviously recording um, power. It was just zero power. Yeah. But the cadence was uh, also reporting. So when the cadence went to zero, that's how I knew, or dash dash, I knew it was done. So 118 hours of test use on that. That was interesting. It was more fun trying to set up the rig than the results. The result was like, oh, okay. So Vaughn indoors. <clears throat> yep. You came up with the, uh, you explained to me the other day why the headwind was a godsend for you. Now the kicker headwind, uh, which now, side story on this, little Maxi's change table is near where Vaughn's bike is set up and yep. near where the headwind is. Now there's a saying about urinating and headwinds and learning a lesson of not max hasn't learned that lesson yet and literally pissed on my headwind <laughs> i can't make this up anyhow the headwind was wiped down <clears throat> yes and as i was cleaning it von you mentioned uh yes i've finally been able to prize the headwind away from your indoor setup to use it for the first time for a few minutes yes yes um and you were upstairs with Max, I think he was having a nap, and um, I wasn't going to call out for you to turn the fan on for me, or right. turn it up, because I didn't want to wake up Max. That's, okay, that's a nightmare, <laughs> and were you in a Zwift Academy race or a yes. ride? Okay, so, so I couldn't stop the, sure. the ride, I was doing a 10 minute interval, and I'd got uh, to the point where, you know, you don't want to kill the interval, um, in, in, otherwise you'll you, you lose committed. the star. You committed. You'll lose yeah. the star in the workout yeah. and you're like, oh great, there's you know 50 minutes gone for nothing. Um, so I was thinking, how do I how do I do this? And I'm trying to think about ways I could um I've got your messages, attention. I've got messages or calls before, but yeah, yeah okay, <laughs> to, to turn a fan on or bring a drink in. That's it's, right. it's stuff of nightmares when you forget to turn the fan on. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, so um, mentally thinking through it, I'm like, I've got the Wahoo app on my phone. I wonder if I can find the peripheral connect to it, and it worked. I managed to get onto the headwind and uh, amp, amp up the So you loaded the, the, Wahoo, loaded the Wahoo app, paired to the sensor, yep. went to manual mode and then uh, um, up the fan. Yep. <laughs> there you I go. was so like stoked by the end of the interval, like, yeah, I've nailed this. Yeah. <laughs> now we will have to go through a video on how to pair your heart rate monitor to that. So when your heart rate goes up, the fan goes up as well. Yeah, well, I probably could have switched to that mode, but at, I, at that point in time, uh, I just needed more wind. It would have needed to pair to your, you had the, uh, the ticker Armband. fit, did yeah. the ticker fit on. Yeah. <clears throat> you would have needed to touch the unit to pair it to your heart rate strap, so there's a bit of uh, is it? magic okay. to happen there. Um, it would be handy, though, in the app to be able to just put the anti-ID in, but then again, you need to have the anti-ID. This is all pretty hard tech. But it's all the Wahoo ecosystem, right? So uh, it is. So it, it should just work together, shouldn't it? There we go. Hey, Wahoo. Wahoo. We'll get onto that. <laughs> Uh, over to the Garmin stuff this week, out with the 8th, uh, 1030. Now, Vaughn, you have the 1030 head unit. Yes. You've had that for two years now because you got that pretty early on. Yeah, yeah. It had just come out and was still doing some firmware. Bringing I steered clear of that for a year. Yeah. I steered completely clear of the 1030 for the year, the phablets. Yeah, um, but you managed to do me a favour this week, didn't you? Well, this very, very slow rollout of the new firmware with all the... 30 features on it, so the 530, the 830, now the 1030 have all the same 
feature sets, so to speak, and like with Climb Pro and all the rest. Now, this, the firmware rollout, I keep an eye on the forums, a lot of forums, um, in particular the Garmin firmware forums, and there was a beta firmware a couple of weeks back that we could manually install, and then the public firmware went out 8.00 that had all these new features. And I've been wanting to check out Climb Pro. Everyone's talking about how cool Climb Pro is. I still think it has some rough edges, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But the rollout was so slow, 10% rollout. Garmin do incremental rollouts to their user base based on probably serial number, not location. So a few people will get the update, they'll wait. A few people more will get the update, very slow. Now we've got two 1030s at home and it took two or three days for one of them to get the update, that was Von's unit. So then when it said, oh, do you want to install that, uh, the GCD file or the firmware update? I'm like, no, plug it straight into the USB, grab that file because I know where the file sits, put it onto my unit. Anyway, Von's unit updated first. <clears throat> I was out riding with that with Climb Pro biggest problem with Climb Pro. I love it. Climb Pro, you've seen the, the video that I did on that, just you sort of ride to a hill, it tells you how far from the climbs. Yep. Uh, first of all, it, will, it broke down my entire route because you have to have a pre-planned pre route for it to work, to know where you're going, and then it breaks down that route into certain climbs, which is really cool. You can break, I call it Fondo Pro. If you were doing a Grand Fondo where you hadn't ridden the course before, you weren't familiar with it, it'll break down the course into certain sections. Super cool. But it only works when you're in navigation mode. And 99.99% of the time, I'm not navigating anywhere. I'm only using it for this test case. What would be super cool, so I've gone off on a bit of a tangent here. <clears throat> what would be really cool is if it, obviously the head unit knows what climbs are coming up because it has the maps on there, it has elevation on there. It'd be nice to say, okay, you're heading in this direction. There's a climb in front of you. 90% of the time you go up and to the left or up and to the right, you go 10% of the time and or breaks down the stats of where you've ridden before. And yeah. it presents you with a which climber you want or which climber you're about to start on. That would be nice. So for me, Bunnyong has <clears throat> up and to the left, which is the National Championships course, up to the left and to the top, which is our casual route if you want to go all the way to the top, or straight over on the main highway. So three climbs. It'd be nice if I came into town in just normal riding along mode, it prompted and said, hey, a bit like Strava segments, you know, here are the three climbs coming up. Are you going to be riding any of these? Touch the button, bang, then you have the climb pro stuff for that particular segment of that climb. That would be super cool. If you're going to do loops of the Bunning Yong course, which again is the Australian National Championship road course, I mean, they do about 16 loops of a 10K course. If you were to do loops of the course for training, you can't easily use climb pro because you need to set a, course, a navigatable course for how many laps you'll be doing. On a good day, you might do a few more laps. On a bad day, you might pull the pin and do less laps. But if you're doing more laps than what's navigated, you're not gonna get Climb Pro. Or you have to restart the, it's just a pain in the ass. It because just, it's route based. It's route based. So it's, it's cool functionality to demonstrate what these head units can do. It computes everything on the head unit. You throw in a TCX file or just a general flat file of you know, your route and it will do all that for you. Really cool stuff, really love it. It's just impractical. Just impractical. So the short version of that is thanks for updating my 1030. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not using it anyway because you're riding indoors. I'm riding indoors for now, yeah. <coughs> Once I can get my uh, my head set down, head stem down, I'll be able to get outdoors again. So Yvonne has her head stem up nice and high because you couldn't reach down before, could you? No. You had little, um, little Maxi was right here. Now Maxi's out the back. <laughs> you can, we can, I need to re rework my back so I can reach that low. <laughs> well, we can do that on the kicker bike or the neo bike because they um, they adjust very very easily. Very yeah, cool. That'd be great. So back onto the bikes and the smart bikes. Um, there's, it's a funny one. These smart bikes. A lot of people and I myself, I wasn't a fan. You've been very much not a fan for a while. I've been a critic. I'm, I've always said I don't want to ride a brick fence with a saddle on it. Um, I've been, a, I'm a hardcore roadie, um, yes, I have certain sock height requirements, I have to have matching bottles most of the time. I'm coming around to smart bikes though, but it's, I've had to take a step back. I've had to take a step back and look at why the market is going in this route. And it's been funny, I've, was I wrong in the past? Well, yeah, have to I'm ride them to find out. I'm slowly coming around, I'm so, I think more because <clears throat> The experience the company is now offering us, both Tax and Wahoo. Stages will probably get there. I don't know a lot about their bike though. I haven't even thrown a leg over one of their bikes. They're, 
making it more roadie like more okay. serious cyclist like rather than more spin studio like and that's yeah. important yeah i've look i've been into a few spin studios and Bloody i've horrible. been into a lot of hotel gym yeah. spin bikes so i would like to see how this differs if it does it may not they might have just added some interactivity to those stationary things okay. and let's see how it goes so and until you've ridden one you really don't know no we really don't know um the spec sheets are fantastic yeah. the spec sheets read like a smart trainer it's as simple as that but there's more to it than just the smart trainer a lot of people are saying well that costs the same or more than a kicker and a headwind and all it's not the same thing yeah um it's and as i've said in my wrap-up video from eurobike you can't really compare a neo to a magnus sure they're smart trainers they're different things the bike has a whole new area to it, which is fit and sizing. Does it fit you? What does it feel like? How does it respond? It's a whole new bike. It's like if we had to cover, imagine we had to review bikes as well as smart trainers at the same time. And yeah. the compatibility of that, that'd be a lot bigger video. Um, yeah. And that's why I'm having to split my videos up for the smart bikes, else yeah. they'd become a massive monster. So a lot of conversations this week online. A lot of people like to throw shade. Um, somebody before said, I'd rather ride outdoors. And my comment to that was, outdoors, the sun throws shade. Indoors, you get shade thrown on the internet. Um, that sums up. That's my... Uh, <laughs> I'm a father now. I can give shitty father advice. <laughs> <laughs> so don't throw shade too hard. Again, I'm sitting back... It's not back. for everyone. I can, I can see that. It's not for everyone. So my, I sat down and come up with a bit of a rant a bit of an explanation of smart bikes to somebody this week a lot of people are saying i don't like them screw smart bikes whatever but cyclists are great at eating their own if it's going to get more people on bikes more often or more people using technology on bikes uh i could i i have to take a step back and go well shit that's going to help my channel here that's going to help me do what i do and that's um helping people understand this new technology to have a better experience indoors and out so i've got to take a step back and say hang on there might be something here and can I read my long rant? I've got, it's got, got five points to it. Sure, I, and then I'll tell you why I think, a, or my use case of why I think an indoor bike would be great. Okay. Hey, look, yeah. rainbow. Oh, wow. Double rainbow, no, just a single rainbow. Single rainbow. <sighs> Summer's coming. Summer's coming. So, smart bikes, it's a logical shift that takes stepping back to understand. So, for me, number one, they're no threat, because a lot of people are taking them as if they're a threat to what they're doing. They won't, take, they won't take over your pain cave if you don't want them to. You won't turn into a Lycra Spin Studio Fluoro Lycra Les Mills Instagram model if you do not want to. If you don't understand them, that's fine. And I didn't. I'm coming around. But someone does. And that someone is a number of large multi-million dollar companies uh, who specialise in indoor cycle training. They're all on the bandwagon. Right. Stages, Wahoo, Tax, SRM have their bike. What bike have been in the game for a while now with their interactivity? Oh. Peloton cannot be far off producing an interactive bike because we're all sick of this on Peloton. Peloton's still a manual spin bike. Yes, it is. So Peloton can't be too far off making an interactive bike. So all these multi-million dollar companies are on the bandwagon for reasons. Reasons, I'm guessing, is all money. Let me get into that. Number two, smart bikes, and this is a big one for me. Wait for it. Smart bikes make more sense for indoor riding than a bike designed specifically for riding outside. Boom! And that's coming from me, who has ridden outside <laughs> bikes indoors since forever. I'm saying I want to ride my bike, it's my setup, I've put my DI2 on there, I've put my saddle on, my handlebars, my it's my bike, I want to ride my bike indoors. But when you think about it, taking that step back and going, you know what, why the hell? Do I have disc brakes on an indoor bike on a bike I'm riding indoors? Why do we have financially sure it might make a little more sense for a lot of people, but it's not for everyone. And it okay. allows the hardware industry to keep selling things. And that's another point here. We've got to realize the underlying theme here is it's all marketing. It's all that's the only reason why the industry keeps operating the way it does. It's essential to their survival. If you look at tax, if you bought a tax neo in 2016 and they made hundred dollars margin off you 2016 let's say that tax neo lasts for five six seven eight years that's great for you that's really really bad for tax and same goes for every other company every other technology company that are push boxes of things and don't sell services yeah peloton work because they sell both uh zwift itself has annuity it sells service everything is going subscription based for a reason because if you live forever you pay forever 
buy a tax neo, a kicker, a, a something or other, a Garmin yeah. head unit, guess what? You pay once, even in, in respect of the Garmin head units, you pay once and you still get firmware updates way down the track. So they're $20 yeah. they might have made from you from the sale, maybe yeah, $200, let's, let's go the, the higher version. That $200 goes into supporting you for a long time. So these bikes allow companies to keep selling things. That's how things just work. It opens up the activity that we enjoy to a lot more people. And then C point number two, riding outdoor bikes indoors does not make sense. Because you're trying to explain to somebody that's not familiar with cycling why they've got to go and buy an outdoor bike to ride indoors, and then explain to that person why their through axle bike they've just purchased isn't compatible with the quick release trainer they've just got, and then explain to them why they've got to take their rear greasy wheel off in their lounge room to do a workout and get crap everywhere. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I think we've been conditioned for years that indoor cycling is just fine and it make, it's easy, but look, it's not. I've built my YouTube channel here on explaining complex shit in easier ways or explaining things in ways companies can't do it through their standard marketing um, and, you know, happy promotional type yeah, stuff. Yeah, from your perspective. You've seen yeah. how I, I do things here. So I've built my channel around that. So to be honest, indoor cycling, as we know it, is a pain in the ass. It's too complex, it doesn't make sense, but smart bikes go a long way to simplifying that process. Again, we unboxed something yesterday that came with everything I needed, everything to just ride, just ride. Whereas if I unbox a smart trainer, it doesn't come with everything I need. I might need yeah. a through axle converter, or I might need a, um, a front riser block. I might need, oh shit, it doesn't come with a cassette. Like really, how absurd is it that trainers ship without a cassette? Yeah. You can't ride it without a cassette. But then you can also you can't ride a smart bike without a bike. Sorry, a smart trainer without a bike. Which brings me to the point. Mm -hmm. When a bike manufacturer is going to bring out smart indoor bikes? I think they're in a very good position at the moment to sit back for another year or two. Yeah. And see how Wahoo do with their bike, mm -hmm. with their competitive bike, as in a real... I'm going to offend anybody or somebody here by saying these new smart bikes are competitive cyclist bikes indoors. Okay, that's what they're trying to target yeah. the market. What bike right? tried it, didn't quite hit the mark. They they knocked on the door, but I yeah. think these new bikes from Tax Stages um, and Wahoo are going to really change this the landscape a little bit. And brands like Specialized, brands like Giant, brands like Trek, we'll be looking at that and going, wow, shit, we've gone, we've all gone and made gravel bikes. Yeah, we've so all gone and made time trial bikes. Yeah. If, if these companies, these training companies <clears throat> succeed, yeah. then these bike companies might come in and just cut their lunch, do it better. Yeah. But it's hard to come in from a non-technical um, industry into a technical industry. Unless they brand it. So it is the Wahoo specialized bike Ooh. kind of thing. So they license to put their name on it, that kind of thing. Yeah, we've seen a bit of licensing around. I don't think licensing really works that well because there's, people love brands. People love their brands. Well, there was For like a, the Le Monde Tour de France bike that we saw Coz had, yep. was it? Was that the Yeah, Le yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that did go up and down. Somebody did say, look, Jane, there was a bike that went up and down. Closed yeah. system, no, not out past, not Bluetooth. Yeah, or yeah. They don't, so you couldn't use it for much else. That's an example now, of um, yeah. branding and collaboration. Yeah, but I'm thinking more of specialized to a power meter that's four eyes. Yeah. Meh. So People love the four eyes brand. People have the specialized brand. You sort of merge them together. Who wins? I, I don't kind of, I don't think Kicker will, or Wahoo will go to a specialized and make their bike for them. Maybe, maybe they will. I don't know. But yeah. that's a good outside the, outside the box thinking of where that may go. Because it brings me to, the industry cares about sales volume, that's it. Yeah. They don't care about esports. The industry does not care about hardwiring your trainer so it's more accurate. They do not give a shit about our demands for more accuracy or better erg mode. Um, and I'm talking brutally honest here, the industry cares about volume sales. And we can jump up and down about all those issues I've just raised, but at the end of the day, they're just sideshow. Our voices are not heard. The mass, the general masses just will buy up whatever's been promoted, sold, and showcased because it's all about a, a, yeah. all about volume sales. That is it. That's yeah. what pays the bills and everything. So, in the case of smart bikes, that volume sale market is a lot bigger, a lot bigger. I even uh, took off my jumper before to switch to this one. I had baby spi on it. Mm -hmm. like, such is life these days. Switching my jumper over, I threw my um, top over the kicker bike. I went, oh, gr no grease. 
<laughs> different market. So again, yeah. different. Like, dig in. Wow. I mean, I'm down a rabbit hole of an That's example. That's a very, very expensive clothes horse. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 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 the crazy horse is an expensive clothes horse, yeah. but it did drop in price to 12,000 US. Very good point, very good point. But even that, just a small thing that I yeah. realised in having one, I'm like, hang on, there's no maintenance here. We don't no. know the maintenance schedule about the, about these bikes. People are asking, well, how sturdy is it? Is it going to last? Is it going to hold up? We don't know. Yeah, what we about do the not belt? know. Right, right. And when it comes back to the Wahoo thing, now let's let's bring up the, the war, the, uh, the kicker core and the kicker 18 issues early on. We didn't encounter those. The earlier reviewers, the media units that we had, we didn't encounter those issues. So people are saying, why aren't you talking about those issues? Well, we have a lot, and we are right now. We don't know about this bike yet. Does yet. that mean people are going to hold out 12 months? Some people will. Don't know. Don't know. But until we know more about it, and that's what I'm happy to be a part of. Um, if it's testing, if it's if one's going to break, I'm going to try and break it. Don't worry about that. I'm going to try and break this. I thing. want to see you do a mad ass sprint on it and see how it holds up. Mad ass. <laughs> uh, okay. All I'm going to be thinking of mad ass sprints. Um, <laughs> the kicker bike does have flex. Yes. So yeah. I took some footage of that today. Okay. Awesome. So anyway, I, I think it's interesting. I'm changing my views. I mean, obviously, the five weeks ago, my views on life changed quite a lot. Mm -hmm. How good is he? He's sleeping really well. Um, but it's about broadening what I do, and I'm, I'm, I've got strict views on things for sure, and I've got opinions on things. I'm sure you could roll back through any llama drives and say, you said this, or you said that, or you were wrong about this. Sure, I was. Guess what? It's a new day. And you'll admit it. <laughs> Live and learn. Live and learn. White flag, that one. So we'll see how we go. And not, that's not just me being kind to smart bikes. Don't worry. If the user experience is shit, you will know about it. No problems at all. Um, but we'll, we'll dive into that when we get there. Yes, so my uh, comment was my use case for an indoor uh, spin bike would be if I could have it in my office yeah. and have a teleconference call. At the same time? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what I want to yeah, achieve. Yeah, how low are you going to have to set your FTP? Though you could probably set your FTP a little lower with the buttons on the top. Yeah. Just down a little bit. <laughs> well, there's a use case for the buttons. Yeah. There we go. Okay, we'll forward that over to ticket. <laughs> Can you make the bucket the, 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 the button go to uh, yeah teleconference mode? <laughs> <laughs> Ultra quiet. So in in that case, it needs to be quiet. I need to be able to um, adjust it so it can be near a desk in in my office space, mm -hmm. so it's not taking up all of that. And maybe uh, have my baby near it. <laughs> footprint is smaller. What is the footprint of the kicker bike and the neo bike okay. than a normal bike? Okay. Um, and like you said, no grease. So. That makes it better to be in uh, not a training room environment. You'd still put a mat down because humans are leaky. Yeah. Sweat. Yeah, I, I, even my drink bottle. But it's so hard to get. You might leak from somewhere else. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'd still put a mat down. Um, I don't know, but it, it's really interesting to see the old school. It was funny. It's like when Strava came along. People are like, Strava's going to ruin cycling. So people are going to race Strava rather than race themselves outside. And then when you think about it, it's like, hang on, so. More people cycling and more people training hard, even just to like get a Strava comp to enjoy cycling, upgrade their bikes, eat healthier, and be competitive. That's a bad thing. I think we've all come around. Strava's fine. It's got its place. Exactly. And it's not for everyone. Exactly. And I think, do you see people getting mad at cross bikes? I've got a cross bike. I'm going gravel riding now. I've got people aren't getting mad at that. They're having fun. Um, indoors, again, it's seen one as as a threat. I think, but um, yeah. All good. Anyway, lots more coming up on smart bikes, but trust me, um, I for one welcome our new smart bike overlords, but I will not be letting go of the direct drive trainers that I have, especially that <laughs> Le Mans, that Le Mans revolution. If only you had a through axle converter. Um, coming up this week, world championships in Yorkshire. Yes. Woot. Yes, I read the new Yorkshire course just the other day. On the Swift? Yes, mm -hmm. doing a workout. Um, I got to see a lot more of the countryside. Um, yeah, it was nice to have a new road to do in the Zwift land. Which route did you do? The standard, just join and ride? No, I did the full The course. full loop? Okay, yeah. so you, did you do the reverse? Do the reverse? Oh, man. Don't know. So, like a little valley, we just came down there. In one direction, the reverse is like you slowly grade, slowly grade up, slowly grade up, slowly grade up, and then just drops off. Okay. And you don't really notice it that much. You go the other way, holy ball bag, Batman. 
my word. I <laughs> I bailed out a few times on the on the uh, llama live that I did with one of the trainers because it's a it's a seventeen percent wall. Oh, seventeen percent no thing. But it's not. You sort of go into it downhill as well so you're like rolled into, roll into it, it you just, it's not as if you can see it like say um the epic con elder swift you know it's coming you're like okay here comes a climb da, 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 da. you know this is just like da, 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 it's da, short though right whack it's short but it makes you jump out of the saddle and punch it which is good yeah but fruit cake from friday like it, tour de burbs oh yeah, 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 yeah. um pinches yeah, yeah. Uh, two of the burbs. I miss two of the burbs. Yeah, me too. That's a tough little loop. That's one of the famous Melbourne climbs. It's a Thursday night ride, I think. Is it Thursday or Tuesday? It's Thursdays. It runs both days. Two time slots. One with stops, one without. The last two of the burbs I did was a few years back. I was out on the single speed testing some lights or something like that. And I got caught up in the two of the burbs because there's you know, 100 pet riders come flying past. I'm like, like, that's a good sit. So I sat in on, this, on the single speed. The single speed was perfect at Doncaster Hill, which is probably, it's a one mile climb, 1.6 Ks, I think. Average gradient at 4%, but it steepens up at the start, flattens out and steepens up. And the, the gearing I had was perfect for the first little pinch. The rest was just balls. <laughs> I had like a, uh, like useless for the spin, like the single speed that I had on. Oh, right. I had a 39 and 17 on, I think it was. Um, but we have been known to be able to do that climb in the big ring with a tailwind. Yep. If you're going hard enough. I think Slane has that comp. Slane must be close to that comp. Anyway. All good. So World Champs. Back to World Champs. Um, we've been watching the Volta because we've been up at night. Yep. It's been my favourite company at night time. Because <laughs> I've been sleeping. When I've uh, had the 3am time slot night shift with little Max. Yep. So, uh... The Volta was a good watch. Yeah, so World it's Champs. sad that that's over now. Well, World Champs is a whole week of cycling. It's a whole week? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So Paris, uh, I think the juniors, oh, under awesome. 19, under 23. I thought that they were only really going to no. televise no. the... Um, well, there's going to be live TT streams. And road race. No, no. Uh, there's the mixed time trial I saw somewhere. I should look it up here. But there's awesome. a ton of stuff coming up. Um, I like it. I like it. And we get to crown a new World Champ just before the, the uh, road season closes for the year. Um, but as the road season closes, it's always coming around sooner than, than uh, every single year. Uh, uh, tour Down Under. Tour Down Under. It is coming. Are we going? I'm going, are you? Well, I guess if you're going, I'm going to have to go. So we're back to uh, Tour Down Under over in Adelaide. Um, that'll be the mid-January. I hope to be riding outside by then. <laughs> we're going to have to do baby shift. Uh, baby shift? Baby sitting shifts. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're getting babysitters. No, no, I'm happy to. I'll stay home and carry Maxie your animal. In the aircon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sit there. You can go for a ride in the morning and we'll tag team. And then, yeah. Sounds is that how good. parents do it? I think that's how parents do it. It's called parenting, yeah. Okay. Still trying to figure it out. Yeah. It's only been a few weeks. <laughs> oh, good. Um, any other topics to discuss? Um, actually, I have one coming through on Twitter here um, that I will jump onto. But, Vaughn. Yes. Any other topics? Sports, sports tech. Have you been listening to the FitFile podcast with myself and DC Romeka discussing all things new in sports tech for you to become a more informed athlete? I know that I've said it so many times. Oh, come on. It's what I listen to when I really can't get to sleep. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> no, of course not. I think Von hears it when I edit it because I go through, I record the podcast I listen to it several times. Yeah, and I... Because of the delay, I think I've spoken about this before, because of that time delay, uh, we can't, it's just, and yeah, I go through and edit out the conversation, so every time someone speaks, we just chop the audio up, so it flows a lot better. Again, it's for the people. That's the experience that I want to have listening to it. I, I want it to flow quicker, so anyway, Von hears me uh, edit that up. Yes. So I get to hear it. So the answer is yes, you have been. You have yes. been. Um, just looking through my Twitter feed here, uh, GP Lama on Twitter, if you want to follow me along there. Von, you're also on Twitter. Yes, I'm Von M. V-O-N, or V-O-0, or V-O-N-M? V-O-N-M. You've got Von M on Twitter. Yeah. I should know that. My Instagram is more frequently okay. used, which is V-0. But on Twitter this week, over in Perth, somebody put up a video of some guy getting out of his car and going absolute nuts at some cyclists. Yeah. Road rage to no end. The cyclist just stood there and looked. It is brilliant. This dude was ice cold. The cyclist, he's just like... What the? And yeah. the guy gets... He's jumping around like a mad... And the first thing I thought is that needs music. So I put some techno soundtrack to that. Um, that that's it looked going. like he was stepping out. It looked like he was like 
Well, he was, um, so that's currently sitting on 39 retweets and 239 likes on, on, on Twitter. But that's not the tweet I was looking for. Somebody asked a really good question that I will get to because I want to answer it on here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So I found it just here by Kevin over on Twitter and he's asked, GP Lama, what are your thoughts on why indoor bikes and bike tech are so popular? Five years ago, I would have never imagined this as the popular slash reviewed subject it's become. Okay. Good question. Um, bike tech, I think, well, first of all, stepping back a little bit, I've been doing a lot of stepping back lately. Indoor bikes and bike tech, well, indoor cycling works. Mm -hmm. Intervals have been done for years and years and years by sporting institutes. It works. Intervals work. So that kind of training works. And it's something that I've done for the last 20 years or so riding. So that's the start of it. Everyone else is coming around to that. Because back in the day, we, you want to get faster, just ride your bike. Want to get faster, just race your bike. But now we know that getting faster in a sprint, you need to do specific intervals. Getting faster in a time trial, you need to do specific intervals based on the demands of your event. We've, we've applied this science and the technology to become better cyclists and faster cyclists. Um, I think that's the tagline of uh, the Trainer Road podcast. Um, so indoor bikes and bike tech. We're also now, we have more free time. We have more disposable income, and the tech is becoming a lot cooler, a lot cooler. So, just sorry to go back on that mm -hmm. last point. Mm -hmm. Your point about the intervals. Yep. How does that relate to indoor cycling? It's easier to do it indoors. Absolutely. All right. If you're doing intervals, okay. most of the time you prescribe it in a, a specific interval session that you want to do. Let's just say 20 minutes, 20 by you know, two by twenties. You, it's hard to find that outdoor. Ah, sprinting, I'd really recommend doing it outdoors. Indoors, you can become right. strong. Outdoors, you become fast. And get the technique. Yeah. The technique is a big one. And cool. yeah, let's not get into rocket plates okay. and techniques so and stuff. Your main point on the first part about yeah. intervals was the specificity and being yes. able to do that better indoors. Yes, right. absolutely. From Coach yeah. Troy <laughs> to CTS with Carmichael through to um, Sufferfest type stuff, through to, I mean, nowadays you've got full gas, you've got um, well, Zwift, obviously. Yeah. All those software companies, they work for a reason. Now, that, that reason is changing because things are now becoming social and competitive indoors, which was never a thing. Um, but first of all, yeah, indoor cycling works when done correctly. Um, and why is bike tech so popular? And uh, yeah, what I mentioned before, I think it's cooler. It's become, there's a few <laughs> wow factor things there. Like you're riding along and, what, you can feel the hill? Wow, that's kind of neat. Like the first time you got on a smart trainer, game changing, absolutely. And now the bikes go up and down. Is it a gimmick? I Sure, call it whatever you want, but it's there. It's a bit of wow factor. It's a bit of fun. We have that disposable income to spend on it and have that better experience. I think that's pretty cool. Um, more people are getting into fitness, Strava. More people are on there tracking their fitness. Because Technology is in everybody's lives now. The iPhone. Yeah huge, huge um, upswing with people knowing technology. Your mum knows how to use an iPhone and knows how to take PDF files and attach them to me. Who would have thought? Yep. Um, so technology is becoming easier. But on the, on the flip side of that, technology is becoming harder. That's why this channel exists. Technology yeah. is too hard. We try to simplify it. We try to understand it. My day is spent a, a lot of the time trying to understand technology. You know, trying to configure it understand how it works. DC Ramekis is the same thing. He's just fascinated with how the thing works, getting his head around how things work and why. Um, anything else on that? I think that's probably my, my overview, is that indoor training works. It's becoming more popular. Time crunch cyclists is, is a thing. The demographic for Zwift and indoor cycling bike tech, um, you're a pretty much a 40-year-old guy or 41-year-old woman that's the main target demo of all this stuff, who has a couple of kids, the money to spend on this new tech, short on time, wants to get into fitness, um, all those things line up. And again, back to my smart bikes thing, that's the audience, bang, right there. Taking a step back again and mentioning the P word, Peloton, big money in it. Whether they're successful or not, that doesn't matter. They can fail, that's fine, they have volume massive volume and that's yeah. usually all that the initial uh, startup people the initial management need they need volume <laughs> popularity they can cash out and go the company can go under they make their millions that's what it's all about anyway probably not the best answer I wanted to give I had a better answer in my head that explains it speaking of Peloton 
Yes. Are they going to exist in the future? How are they going with their latest court cases? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, apparently, they've been tied up in more music deals or non-deals they haven't done with licensing. I've, I've been tagged in it because I was mentioned again because Peloton tried to... They sent a uh, cease and desist to me for using the word digital Peloton news, um, which I told them to, no, I, please don't send me these letters. Please reassess this in not so certain words. And they did, a couple of those letters. So that's all gone, but that blew up a little bit. Um, no, I haven't... I've been up with the news, but it's nice to be mentioned in that again. I don't want to be involved in controversial or shit like that. Like, I just want to get down, talk about this new tech and, you know, share the love. That wasn't too much love there. Anyhow, they'll get what they need. Um, I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm sure they'll be fine. So we'll wrap it up there for today. I think we've exhausted our topic list. There's a bit of behind the scenes of what's going on. Our take on things and a bit more casual than the standard presentation of technology and me trying to get my head around what's going on. So... Tons of stuff coming up. I've got some DI2 bike stuff to get stuck into. I've got some new disc rotors to put on the bike. Um, so it's not all just about indoor stuff. Uh, the sun, well, is coming out here. It will come out. It's coming. Well, Tomorrow. It's <laughs> scheduled to come out here. It was a nice day the other day. So we'll be outside doing some more rides. Um, yeah. Happy days. Yeah. Life is good. Little Maxie. Good Life to have you on the show. better with Max in it. Good to have you on the show, Max. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Keep it down in the back kids these days i don't know all right thanks for watching this one again we'll be back with more soon and uh yeah let us know how you're doing drop a comment in below just to say hello where you're calling in from where you're watching from any topics you'd like me to discuss or cover technology that you might find interesting or might think that i find interesting if i can't cover it i might give you an explanation and answer why i won't cover it or haven't covered it or might even spark the idea of opening a door with the company and um us having a lot more fun with new tech on bikes Sounds good. Awesome stuff. Have a great day. Thanks for listening this far. Yeah. And uh, let's get back on that kicker bike. Can't wait. Looks a bit of fun. <laughs>